So for this video, I'm returning to my Stephen King ranking video series with episode 5. Now when I originally planned the series, I wanted episode 5 to include books that I ranked 30 through 21. And then the four episodes after that, I would only talk about five books per episode. So it would be 20 through 16, 15 through 11, etc. But instead, I'm going to go ahead and just start only doing five books per episode. So for this episode, for episode five, I'm going to be talking about books that I ranked 30 through 26. That way, these videos won't be so long. They won't take as long to edit. And I can, you know, theoretically talk about these books for a little bit longer than I normally get to. Anyway, enough of the preamble. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Starting on episode 5 with number 30 on the list, we have Christine. I think for most constant readers, Christine is either a book that they find to be good or decent, not great, but then there's a handful of Stephen King fans that absolutely love this book. I don't normally see a lot of people just straight up hating this book, at least as far as I can see. For me, I really enjoyed this book, obviously because it's pretty high on the list, and there's not really too much that I dislike about the book either. It's a book that's definitely very well paced. I love all of the musical references for the old rock music that's throughout this book. The characters aren't necessarily my all-time favorite Stephen King characters, but they're definitely good and serviceable characters. And I love the character arc for Arnie, where he starts out in the book where he's basically just a nerd who doesn't really get along with a lot of people, he gets bullied in school a lot, and then he gets this new car, Christine, and things start to change for him. And his arc throughout the story, where he ends up at the end, is pretty fun to watch or read. Speaking of watching, the movie adaptation for this is actually really good. And surprisingly, this book came out in 1983, and the movie came out in 1983. Very quick turnaround. If I had to choose a main criticism I have with the book, because I do remember giving this four and a half stars, not quite five stars, the main criticism would be that it's written in three parts. The first part is written from Dennis's first person perspective, and then in part two, we kind of back off of his perspective and we switch to Arnie's third person perspective, and then in part three, we switch back to Dennis's first person perspective. And the first time I read that, it was a little jarring, and I was kind of questioning why King would do that. But for me, that's not really a major criticism, and it definitely didn't hinder my enjoyment of the book. I very much enjoy this book. It is a book that I very much enjoy the adaptation for, but also the book just goes a little bit more in-depth as to what exactly is going on with Christine and how Christine is affecting Arnie. It definitely goes more into detail about that than it does in the movie. The movie is just kind of like, you know, possessed car, takes over the kid, you know. But in the book, you get a little bit more detail. Definitely a great Stephen King book that I can definitely see myself rereading a lot in the future. And that's why it is number 30 on the list. <laughs> For number 29 on the list, I'll be very interested to see what people think of this pick, and that would be The Gunslinger, book one in the Dark Tower series. Initially, the very first time I read this book, I gave it three stars. I was very kind of hesitant with the series after reading this book because it was very jarring, it was very weird, didn't quite get what was going on throughout a lot of it. But it intrigued me enough that I wanted to continue with the series, and I'm very glad I did because it's one of my all-time favorite fantasy series. And as I progressed further and further into the series and I was kind of like ranking my favorite books in the series, this was always near the bottom of the list. Not quite the worst, but nowhere near the best. But after I finished the series and I went back and reread this, read it for a second time, I loved it so much more the second time I read it, and I believe I even gave it four and a half, five stars. It was really good, especially knowing what I know about the series afterwards. 
And for anyone interested in starting the Dark Tower series and they read this book and they're not quite sure if they can continue, just think of this book as like an extended prologue because a lot of people will start with this book and they think it's super weird, which it is, but a lot of people start with the first book and then they don't continue on with the series, which is a shame because the books right after that, books two, three, and four are just amazing. But a lot of people don't even get that far. So if you start the series and you read this book and you're not quite sure if you can continue, just trust me and don't make a final decision until you read the second book. But yeah, I have The Gunslinger at number 29. <laughs> For number 28 on the list, we have The Dark Half. Very underrated Stephen King book that I don't see a lot of people talking about. It's about a guy named Thad Beaumont, who's a struggling writer, but he starts to write some darker stories under a different pseudonym, George Stark. Those books quickly become popular, and he quickly becomes a best-selling author under that pseudonym. He eventually retires his author alter ego and ceremoniously kills him off. But it's Stephen King, so of course something weird has to happen, and his alter ego George Stark literally comes to life and starts wreaking havoc on the town and starts murdering people, and obviously um, the author <laughs> gets blamed for everything. It's a very fun, very dark and twisted, very fast-paced Stephen King book, and it's terrific. One of the rare Stephen King books that I've never watched the adaptation for very interested in watching that. The movie's probably no good, but I'll watch it anyway. Also, another plus for the book, it has one of King's best endings, at least in my opinion, of course. So for number 28, we have The Dark Half. And for number 27 on the list, we have a very underrated short story collection, and that would be Just After Sunset. Not only does this short story collection contain a lot of standout stories, but also it doesn't have a lot of bad ones either, if any. It's just a very solid short story collection. And look at all the wonderful words that people use to describe the book. Right on the back there. Along with the man himself. Even though this is a short story collection, probably my three favorite stories in here are almost novella length. You have the gingerbread girl, you have in just the letter N, and then one of the last stories in here, A Very Tight Place. All very good. I think for anyone interested in trying out newer King works, this is probably a good place to start, at least in my opinion. Not only are the stories in here wonderfully told and brilliantly paced, you also get a lot of variety in the short story collection. You get, you know, classic creepy stories, you get kind of silly creepy stories, but you also get more of the literary side of Stephen King, which, granted, a lot of people don't like as much as his older stuff, but it's this is a good place to start to try his literary side if you haven't read, you know, some of his newer stuff. I also love in the very back of the book, the very end of the book, he gives you notes on all of the stories that he's written in here, and he kind of goes through the backstory of how the stories originated, how he got the ideas for them. Very cool. Again, very underrated short story collection from King. A lot of people probably wouldn't put it this high on the list, but those people would be wrong. Not really, but it is great. And it's number 27 on the list. And to close out this episode of my ranking series, number 26 on the list is a Richard Bachman book, Blaze. This is the seventh and final Richard Bachman book he's ever released. Not necessarily the last he's written, because this is actually one of his trunk novels that he wrote way back in the 70s and never really planned on releasing it. Which always amazes me because I love this story and this book and I can't figure out why he never wanted to publish it. It's sort of Stephen King's take on the classic story of Mice and Men, Except, of course, it's Stephen King writing it, so it's got its own twisted spin to it. And, of course, it has the added bonus of being a Richard Bachman book, so you know it's going to be dark 
and twisted, nihilistic, and just overall very bleak. Basically, it's about these two guys. One of them is named Blaze. The other one is named George. George is sort of the smart one who kind of puts together this plan to steal a millionaire's baby and try to you know, kidnap them and ransom them off for money. The problem is by the time they decide to do this and they're about to do it, George mysteriously dies and he's sort of still with Blaze in his head and in his, and in his mind. And we see Blaze kind of struggle with this. And this might be an unpopular opinion. I'm not sure. I read Of Mice and Men. I read it in high school and then I read it back as an adult. I didn't really like it either time. I don't know, just something about it. I'm not a huge fan of it. And I actually much prefer this version of it, if you can call it that. It's very different, obviously, but I, I love this book. And like with most Richard Bachman books, it's short enough and very fast and quick enough paced that I can basically just read this in one sitting, which I always love to do. And, you, you know, you can't often do that with Stephen King books because they're a little bit more on the chunky side. When I initially read this book, I did not have too high expectations because I knew going in that it was a trunk novel and I was like, oh, Stephen King's just releasing whatever because, I don't know, maybe he's running out of ideas. But I was very much surprised when I was reading this book and I was getting a good ways into it. And I'm like, this is actually really good. How did he never release this book in the first place? And it's a book that I really want to reread. I've only read it once and I read it a long time ago. I still remember most of it, but a lot of the smaller details are lost on me and I really want to go back and reread it and relive it all over again. I'm not quite sure if this would make a good adaptation or not. Maybe something like Shudder could do like an original movie on this and it probably wouldn't be good, but I'd watch it anyway. But anyway, definitely one of my all-time favorite Richard Bachman books. And for this ranking series, it is number 26. All right, so that concludes episode five of my Stephen King ranking video series. And in this episode, like I said, I went through the books that I would rank 30 through 26. And in next week's episode, I'm going to be looking at the books that I rank 25 through 21. Definitely be out on the lookout for that. And definitely let me know what you guys thought of this video. Did I include any of your all-time favorite Stephen King books? Did I include some of your least favorite Stephen King books? Either way, let me know down in the comments below. And also let me know what you think of this format, having five books instead of 10 books. I think I'm gonna do it either way because like I said, it's gonna take a lot less editing and I get to talk about these books a little bit more in depth than I, and then you know what I'm trying to say. I get to go a little bit more in detail about the books than if I were to talk about 10 books at a time. So I'm going to keep doing it that way. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a terrific day.